Hey, what's going on with y'all, man? It's your boy Dan V. the News. We got another one on one with. I go by the name of Ty V. CEO of 237 Entertainment, mm -hmm. CEO of Vibe Records and Artists. Man, you know, I just came link up with my DMV brother. We just by, you know, I'm just about to talk my shit real quick, man. Before I start, for real though, we just gotta really set the tone right real quick. What we talking to, man? Yeah, money and success. That's it. Yeah, money. No, that's it. Let's do it. That's what we talking to. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now he 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 already got the Deuce tape porn. So I'm 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 gonna get I'm I'm gonna set the I'm gonna set the tone right real quick. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure, for sure. Nice. I appreciate being here, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm for sure. up with you. I'm just getting to know you, get to know, uh, get to learn more about your music and everything like that. For you sure. know what I'm saying? So we want to start it out right here, man. Where you from? Man, I'm originally from PG County, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Born and raised PG PG Hospital, Riverdale ass nigga. You know, <laughs> I went to Parkdale High School. Graduated from there, yeah, man. I'm a Riverdale nigga. Like, was you like more so in the mix, or was you just like, a, I'm a cool dude? No, nah, I'm gonna keep it. Money. Keep it a buck with you. My mother ain't let me go out the house too much. Yeah, she was so she was so scared of the streets. Yeah, them streets out them 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 outdoors of the Riverdale because Riverdale get wild sometimes, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like till I hit like probably like around 18, where I was just like, man, fuck it. I just started, you know. Dipping and dodging outside, and I started seeing what the outside world was like, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, man, it's a, it's a wild world in the in the DMV area. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Facts. You know, I used to chill with my cousin Savvy. Savvy used to at that time he wasn't even a business owner. He was just a wild young nigga in the DMV. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just a wild man. I just seen him boss stuff, have a little closing line. Shout out to him too, for sure. Yeah, facts. Man. So how was it growing up? Was you growing up like single single mother, family household? Uh family household for sure, you know. Uh I would say I was definitely blessed with that, you know. Family household, my father was there, mother was there, uh father raised me, mother raised me well, did the best they could, and uh I don't really had no complaints as to how they raised me, you know. I think I came out pretty smooth. Right. I don't have no complaints for real. Mm -hmm. So you grew up, like, basically, did you grow up, like, you know, in a church household, religious household? You know, say? I'll say by by default, my, my parents was Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. you know, but I would like to say they always gave me the luxury to, like, explore, even though they, part, they never said it with their mouth, but, like, I had the luxury to be like, okay, what is Islam, what is, you know, what is different types of religion mm -hmm. you know but by default i'm a, i'm catholic by yeah, default right. mm -hmm. um so when you was growing up you you had a, I, I, i'm pretty sure i mean it's riverdale maryland so it's you For know sure. at the best it's middle class but you know it's, it's got its issues around yeah yeah, yeah 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 definitely, so definitely you grew up so with your family there did, was you able to grow up like in a, in a nice environment and stuff you like know that? the funny thing is like outside of my neighborhood it's like literally once you cross my neighborhood getting a good luck road and start going down Good Luck Road towards like uh, uh, Auburn Avenue, that's when it started looking a little rough. But inside my neighborhood, you would think like, it's like the most peaceful place ever. You know, mm -hmm. you will not even believe just a couple couple blocks down the road a nigga got shot or some shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down bottom a nigga, niggas just out there trapping. You would not believe this type of shit exists in Riverdale. Yeah. But inside my neighborhood, you would just like, think yeah, like so this. Yeah, so you was from the middle class side. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? And, but, but at the same time, all your friends were there on the trap and stuff. Yeah, they was on, everybody, the, was on the trap everybody side. Everybody was on the block. <laughs> everybody was on the block, you know. And I trust me, I respected my place. I knew, I knew, I knew exactly, exactly. I was the type of dude whereby I never forced myself to fit into something I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have to fit into, you know. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I'm but everybody still had love for you and stuff like that. Everybody still had love for me. I don't, I don't really remember. One person from high school that really had a real issue with me from high school. You yeah, know? facts. I just feel like you carry yourself a certain way. You just going they gonna reciprocate that respect back. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, facts, 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 facts. So, uh, was there any time that you ever got into any trouble or anything like that? Uh, man, it wasn't really any time I got into any trouble. I stayed real low key, man. I stayed real low key. Uh, trouble in Maryland? No. Trouble out of state? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you want to talk about that? We could we could talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so we could talk about it. We so could we could talk about a lot of hypotheticals. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So definitely, man. Let's talk about it though, man. You know what I'm saying? For sure. What happened? Was you, was you? You know? Was it like you was more so 
into the scamming world? You was more into the hustling world? What, what was you I was definitely to? more so into the hustling world, you know. Um, I would definitely say it wasn't really a lifestyle I was accustomed to, but I knew somebody who knew somebody who was who we, we you know we became real good friends and just put the game down on me, taught me the game, and I just found out I was really good with numbers and business. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, man, this is a lucrative ass business. Mm -hmm. Whatever business I was into at the time was a lucrative ass business, and you know that business had me. Dealing with people between D.C. and and Colorado, and let's just say the rest is history. Uh, what was the situation that made you, you know what I'm saying, come to a stop to that lifestyle? Man, the situation was that, like, I started realizing I was chasing my tail in a circle. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really care what type of, I don't care how long you hustle, how much you hustle, the outcome of hustling, jail or death is all you get. Mm -hmm. You know, jail or death is all you get. Don't believe these dudes. Jail or death is all you get. So eventually, you're going to have to make an executive decision among yourself. When you're back against the wall, you know, you're going to have to make an executive decision amongst yourself and be like, all right, yo, what we about to do? Because niggas can't live their life in the shadow for the rest of your life. Right. And I just got tired of just like, you feel me, having bundles of cash, you know, you can't really account for, you want to spend money the way you want to spend money, but you ain't trying to be hot about it, and I know me, I'm a, I'm a fly young nigga, I like to do fly shit, but when you move in a certain type of way, you really can't be too, you flamboyant, know, out, flashy, flamboyant, yeah, yeah. outrageous That's how a lot of people shit. get caught up. That's yeah. how a lot of people get caught up, and I follow the rules, so I was just like, you know what, I know who I am, and I know I can't abide by these rules, I need to switch up to a more legit hustle. Oh, did you ever, you know, was you ever arrested, charged with anything at that moment? Nah, I never ever got, I never ever got arrested for anything that I did that I wasn't supposed to do. I got arrested for dumb shit, though. Shit that had no, nothing to do with, I, with what I was doing at all. Mm -hmm. At all. Parking tickets. <laughs> Parking tickets is what I got arrested for. I did a, I did goddamn two weeks, two weeks in motherfucking Denver County Jail for parking tickets. You think they was targeting you because they knew other things about you? You know, I don't think they was targeting me, but I feel like I was. I had a, I had, a, I had a foreign car, and the devil they, they ain't really too like, they ain't really too pressed about five percent tint here in the DMV. You drive around with five percent, you getting pulled over every day. Yeah, I'm yeah. driving with five percent. You know, I get pulled over. They just see black man, foreign car. You know, I saw how they broke down the whole situation. I had never ever encountered some shit like this. Yanked me out the car, put me in the cuffs, threw me in the back. I was just like, yo. And at the time I was going through an injury, dislocated knee or whatever, but I mean, it is what it is. This is America. I ain't tripping about it. Yeah. All right, so throughout that process, yeah. uh, what illegal establishes, you know, established businesses that you, um, that you had came up with, you know what I'm saying? Do you know? For Thank sure. You, legal or illegal? No, legal. We okay. Keep it legal. Yeah, we're we already talking legal. about uh, we already all the illegal. illegal. Now we're talking about the legal. Yeah, right? for sure. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and just let everybody know this is hypothetical. You know what I'm saying? 100%. You know, everything's everything hypothetical. hypothetical. I don't know what we're talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, we don't know what we're talking about right now. You understand? Now. So, yeah. You know so, at the time, I was, making, I, was making, I was making music with my cousin Ryan. Mm -hmm. We had a little. We had a little group called the Swazzle Boys. We still got the Swazzle Boys. We still got we still got music on the way, mm -hmm. and we used to just you know hit the studio every every week. You know, we was going to the studio in Denver called Zilla Studios, mm -hmm. and uh, man, after like a month of us just doing a lot of Afro beat music, I was just like, yo, we should you know what I'm saying Two Thirty Seven Entertainment. That should be the you know that should be the name of of, of the company. He was like, all right. And I just sat on it one night, and I just thought about it. And I lie to you not, I was just laying in bed. It was just like on my mind. And I thought of a logo. And I woke up out of my sleep at like 5, 5.30 a.m. in the morning. And I went to like my drawing pad in, in, in my living room, and I just drew a logo. And the logo was right there on the wall. Mm -hmm. I just drew it. I just drew a random logo and how I wanted it to be. And I was just like, yo, this is going to be the logo right here. Mm -hmm. And... uh I didn't know what I wanted to produce, what I was selling, whatever, whatever, but I just knew that I wanted an co entertainment company. And so along the way, I defined a company whereby, you know, we make music, we promote black businesses in the entertainment field, 
as you can see all around the office, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of black faces being promoted um, and just being recognized from black men to black women. And uh, my whole my whole thing about it was just like I just wanted a, an area whereby, you know, predominantly here in the DMV area is African American people. Yeah. I hardly believe there's a there's a space where black people could walk into and just be surrounded by black people that done the great shit. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's really really important. Mm -hmm. You know, you could walk into a studio, you're gonna see a John Lennon on the wall, you're gonna see a Paul McCartney on the wall, but you're not gonna see. Uh, uh, whoever your favorite rapper is, whoever your favorite entertainer or your favorite athlete or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. you hardly see them. And I just wanted like a place where black people could come in to see they, you know, see themselves and be like, yo, mm -hmm. this man could do it, so maybe one day I could do it too. Yeah. And that was my whole thing. Yeah. When was you ready to take music serious? Uh, I would say about 20, 2016. Why? For me, taking music seriously is when you're ready to put at least sixty to seventy percent of your income into the music. And that's 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 a great point right there because yeah. a lot of artists out here, even the ones that's hot out here in this region, yeah, yeah, yeah. they live off their buzz. Yeah, they live from their buzz. Uh huh. And I, I be trying to tell artists, even if you have a blue check, even if you're doing a million views, two million, five million, keep you have to keep yourself relevant by 100%. keeping yourself in the marketing. Hundred percent. But if it's promotion and music, whether it's promoting some content from you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because now we're in the internet age, whereas now, these days, people buy your music based if they like you or not. For sure, for you know, sure. You gotta like your music, they for sure. like you. If yeah. you're a real dude, if you're, you know what I'm saying, uh, if you're a Rallo mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that, you Rallo. Mm -hmm. If you're a Rallo or something like that, like, you know what I'm saying, people like you because you real street, you yeah. real dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you know what I'm saying, things like that. So, um, at the same time, I think, you know what I'm saying? Keeping your brand relevant into the image of the people in the public, that's very important. Very, very. Yeah, you know what I'm strongly saying? Agree. Third, so, yeah, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, you said you was giving 60 to 70% of your income. Yeah, for me, like, when you consider yourself a serious, you know, you serious artist, it's like 60 to 70% of your income. So if you work at McDonald's, and let's just say you live with your mama, you know, let's just say every two weeks you're making like $600 off of music, off of, off of McDonald's, at least to consider yourself a serious artist, like four, four fifty, five hundred, like four hundred, four hundred four. No, nah, I mean four hundred, four twenty-five should be going towards music mm -hmm. for you to be defined as a serious, a serious artist. Right. And it, you know you got to structure the money out. So, mm -hmm. personally, me, if you're a one-man band, your main focus should be on ten percent making the song, ninety percent marketing. Facts. Facts. Y'all hear what he said? 10% making a song, 90% marketing. Y'all hear what this man said? This man just said facts. I see too many rappers doing this. Yeah. They're not on World Style, though. How you got 100 bands? You're not on World Style. You understand? How you got this? You're not on all streaming platforms. You understand? You know what I'm saying? How you on this? And you're not, you not sponsored on Spotify, uh, not Spotify, but like on, on, on SoundCloud. And or, it's, it's, a, it's a click yeah. away. It's a click you away. You got the bag to do it. You got the bag. You, you, big feature. You know what I'm saying? Rapper probably charging. He he mess with your music. He probably charge you. He really charge a hundred bands. He gonna give you for thirty bands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't think about that, and he'll give you a video. The people don't think about. And a lot bands. of things. I one thing I noticed here in the DMV that people get caught up in is that, I right, so I ran into a lot of a lot of people that a lot of people may not know. Mm -hmm. You know who Money Bag Yo is? Yeah, I know who he is. You know who Money Bag Yo is? Of course. You know who Money Bag Yo is? I might have heard that one. No, he's a well-known rapper, right? So we can we can agree that. So just like everybody agree they who they know who Money Bag Yo is. If I ask ten people who your rap like, do you know this rapper? And they say no, they don't know you. You're a nobody, and that's okay. You could be a somebody, but for now you're a nobody. Mm. So given that you're a nobody, and nobody really know you, get your social currency up. Don't be out here trying to say like, yo, pay me 10 racks for a song, but nobody, why should I pay you 10 racks for? What am I paying you 10 racks for? What are your streams looking like? Your streams is garbage, so what am I paying you 10 racks for? Or you popping in the hood, what's that going to get me? Hood love? Is that going to put money you in my pocket? Don't even pay for music. All right, is that going to put money in my pocket? And I'm just talking from a business standpoint, you know, not even an artist standpoint, from a business standpoint, how is that going to help me? As a CEO and as an executive, I'm trying to sign an artist. It cannot help me. 
So, and this is what I'm going through right now, just being, you know, Vibe Records type shit. When people just come up to me and be like, yo, I need to sign me, manage me. It's like, okay, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to sell you, but it's just like, you can't really do nothing for me. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Say, uh, what would you like to aim for the music? You know what I'm saying? Because I know you got a different style and all. For sure. Now, personally, some days I wake up and I'm in my hip hop mood. Some days I wake up. I'm in my African Afrobeat mood, and I just, you know, I make, I go based off of that vibe. Mm-hmm. For me, I try to make the most blissfully authentic music as possible, as possible. I could be rapping, I could be singing, but one thing I guarantee you is, it's gonna be a vibe. You're gonna fuck with it. It will connect with you in some, in some shape or way or form, like in an emotional way. It will definitely. That's my job as an artist. That's my job as a businessman. Um, when you see yourself, because you, you, you're an Afrobeat. You mostly do Afrobeat. Like, I Afro mostly style. do. I'll say, like, I'll say it's like 60% hip-hop, 40% Afrobeat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you, you try to keep your culture. I mean, I, I never really got to the question, but you're, uh, was you born in Africa or your, your family? Is? I, was born in, I was born in PG County. My family's from Africa. Okay, what part? Cameroon, West Africa. Cameroon, West mm-hmm. Africa. Okay, so you know, said, so do you try to bring that culture? Yeah, so it's it's kind of like it was. It's not even like I try to bring it. It is part of me. Yeah, I can't even like hide it. I can't even like yeah. fake it like it don't exist. When I go home, I speak totally different to my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's just the way I was raised. When I'm in the streets with my niggas, I speak totally different to my niggas. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they call it what code switching. But that's just the way. Nah, that's just how it is. That's just, just the way how it's just it like is. Like you, you, you catch me in the block. I'm talking like you this. You feel me? But if I'm in an interview, I have to have a more presentable. That's it. When I talk to my mother, I say, "Mommy," I say, "Mommy, that Billy, where you cooking?" Blah 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 blah. And she, and you know, what I'm saying that's just how me and my mother talk. You know, when I'm with my niggas, I be like, hey, "Yo," blah, blah blah blah. When I'm talking to my cousin, I be like, "I say Edmond," blah 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 blah. And that's just it. We just that's how we just do it. That's mm-hmm. just how we do it, you know. Yeah, facts, man. Nah, I keep definitely. my I keep my culture close to my heart. Mm-hmm. It's a part of me. Yeah, facts, man. Uh, what you want to be known for as an artist? As an artist, I would like to be known for. Damn, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Somebody who told the truth. Mm-hmm. I like that. I do. I like that. A side question from that: Do you put like? Your, your street element more into it, or do you put more of a good time, get fly? Because I, I see you, you, you fly a big dude, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, I try to like, so I try, what I try to promote is, I don't like to always feel like, you know, hood niggas gotta be, you know, hood niggas all the I time. I get what you saying. You feel me? Exactly. I really came up on an era whereby like, Biggie was a hood nigga. But he was talking but Biddy, Biddy, Biggie threw the make on and was just like, yo, yeah, call yeah. me baby, baby. Yeah, facts. You understand? He, he was really fly with it. So I was just like, yo, in the nighttime, niggas could sag their jeans and wear Tim's. In the morning time, niggas could go to brunch in a goddamn, in goddamn suit and suspenders. Mm-hmm. In the afternoon, niggas could wear, you know what I'm saying? Niggas could really fit into any... You know, any type of vibe that it really, really, you know, suits the situation. That's, you know, that's that's really what I try to promote. Not necessarily that niggas just got to look dusty or niggas got to look like, you know, they've they, they, they been trapping 100 days long for 100 weeks every single day. Nah, not at all. You, you basically promoting the glamorous, right? It's more like a, a like a Rick Ross type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I would I would say. I would, I'm not saying you're trying to be like him or anything. I'm saying it's like that type of vibe is like I'm I'm pre- pre- presenting the good life. Yeah, we come from that, but we we trying to. And then in the lyrics, you know, you just you just remind people like, yo, I could wear this pico, I could wear a fresh pair of Tims, I could wear you know Balenci's or whatever. Mm. But remember, this is where I come from. You know, yeah. and I will say, Rick Ross' lifestyle and you know what he does, and maybe other rappers spill into you know the type of music I promote or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, just as any other rap. Yeah. So next question right here is, um, okay, you're more so into the good vibes. You know, the DMV rap scene is more street. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody want to be a street rapper, I and mean, we just talked about that, right? For sure. Like, how can you get a, gain a crowd? I, I, I'm pretty sure you're trying to get a crowd outside this region, but at the same time, you need a fan. You, you, you would like to have a fan base out here, too. 
So how would you be able to do that? You know, uh, personally, I actually prefer a fan base in this region first before outside of this region. Um, simply because this is my hometown and this is where I'm from. I'm always going to love people from the DMV. I'm probably never going to move from the DMV because mm -hmm. I love this place so much. Right. Um, the thing is, most times when, let's take Tupac for example, or let's take Biggie Smalls for example, or let's take Jay-Z or any of the greats. I can tell you a 90s baby too, man. 100%. I can tell, I can tell the way you bring up these yeah, 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 90s baby. If man. you see most of the greats, they never really follow people. They never really follow the trend. They set a trend. Mm -hmm. So, in my experience, what has to happen is a leader is going to have to come. It could be me. It could be somebody else. It's going to have to come and be like, yo, I know this is what y'all rocking with, but this is the way to go. I really want to see, like, you know, I really want to see DMV when they when they talk when they talk about DMV niggas out of town. I want us to be represented like the flyest niggas, the richest niggas, the niggas with the most swag, the niggas with the most game, the niggas with the you know the prettiest women, the niggas with the most money. Mm -hmm. And right now, that's not what I hear. Right, I hear a little bit of that. When I go out of town, but that's not what all I hear. I need to hear all of that, you know, when I go out of town. And until I get that, I'm still going to be spitting my same fly nigga shit. Mm. What is the record label? The record label is Vibe Records. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what did it come about? Uh, it came about, I'll say, uh, April of 2020. 2020. So yeah. it's this year. This year now, the LLC is 237 Entertainment. 237 Entertainment owns Vibe Records, and uh, 237 Entertainment came about August of 2000, and I'll say 2016. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's right. been around since 2016. Right. Where did, um, where did, where did the name come from? So the area code for Cameroon mm -hmm. is 237, right. and uh, I just added the entertainment at the end. Uh, to just make it official, so uh, the purpose of the name was just to like reconnect back to my roots, you know, back to where I come from, back to the motherland, and uh, back to the type of music that ultimately moves me emotionally the most. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm when I listen to Cameroonian artists, um, man, sometimes I just listen to them and drop a tear, right. you know, because it's so it's just. It, it moves you emotionally like that, you know. Yeah. So that's where the you know name two thirty seven entertainment came from, for right. sure. It's a side question. I'm gonna get to the next question. Sure. Have, you, have you ever been back to the motherland? Hundred yeah. percent. Uh, so I actually went to I I was born here. I went to school there for like four or five years. Okay. Yeah, and then I came back after like the fifth year, and I went back on vacation the following year just to you know. So you've been back and forth. Been yeah, hundred like, yeah, percent back, back and forth. forth. Okay. It's a great place to live. Tell Big Flock to pull up to Cameroon. Man. Okay, 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 <laughs> bad, bad, bad. But like, hey yeah, man, cause I ain't gonna lie, man. I always wanted to go to Africa, man. Uh, it's beautiful. Like I always, always look at it. And it's always like a beautiful scene. Definitely got the most beautiful women, man. No, it no do. Questions. It do, it do, it do. It's one right there, but you know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, though. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the management in the back looking all pretty. You know? <laughs> you know yeah. But nah, definitely, man. For definitely. sure, for sure. But the whole time, though. So right now, all right, so you're an artist, but you're also a CEO. Yeah. You see a lot with a lot of artists, um, just in general, yeah. you know what I'm saying, that tries to be a rapper and a label, it usually falls out. You have a few success stories, like the Rick Rosses, yeah, the yeah, Cameron, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Dipset Movement, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But most of the time, it falls out. So like, is it a difficult thing, and how can you... Be stand out from the other, you know what I'm saying, the other CEOs out here. It's impossible to be an artist and a CEO at the same time. Okay. That's the, I'm going to just let you know from the onset. Yeah. Now, if you're an artist and a CEO behind closed doors, on paper, you're the CEO. But behind closed doors, it's somebody managing the shit for you. Right. Behind closed doors, I have a PR person, I have a marketing person, I have a, they, you know, they have to manage everything for me because for you to deliver the best quality product, and that's the most important part for me, for you to deliver the best quality product on the business side, and for you to deliver the best music on the artist side, you cannot tell me you're trying to produce and make uh, uh, Drake quality music, whoever your favorite rapper is quality music, mm -hmm. and your time is split between being a business owner and being a musician, it's impossible. 
Yeah. That that requires a lot of time. You gotta focus on another artist. I'll tell you straight up, for example, Rockefeller Records. Hove was one of the CEOs of Rockefeller. But Dame told him, yo, fall back from being one of the owners and just stick to making music because you can't manage the business and make music at the same time and expect the music to be good. It's yeah, not going to right, happen. Because in the front line, in the beginning, we only just knew him as to be the artist. You, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Nobody knew. And Dame and, oh, who was it, Biggs? Biggs, they yeah. Focus on them, on the they focused on the They focused on the they oh, the side and they let Jay do his thing. Mm -hmm. Make the music, don't, don't worry about the business side. Because I'm telling you, you try to worry about the business side and the music side, mm -hmm. it's going to kind of leak into the music, and it's not going to really, you're not going to start making the music that you really yeah. want to make. Yeah, facts. You facts, know what I'm saying? Facts, facts, facts. Hold on, what'd you see yourself in the label in five years? In five years, I better be worth $1.5 million. Let's hope I ten. better have, hey, look, let's hope it's 10. I better, I better be worth, I better have, own 100% of my publishing, I have five or six artists signed, my mother better be good living in Africa. My brother better have good health insurance. My sister got to be done with medical school. And Vibe Records need like four or five more locations. Straight up. Mm. All the time. Um, if a, a mainstream record label hits you up, it, are you going to do a partnership? Are you going to do a record label deal? Are you going to do a distribution deal? What's the goal with that? It depends. So mm -hmm. if, a, if, a, if, a, if a label hits me up, um, personally, uh, depending on where I am as an artist and depending on where I am as a label, if I'm pretty solid as a label, depending on my leverage, I'm going to shoot for a venture, 50-50 venture or a distribution deal. Depending on where I am as an artist, I'm going to shoot for a 50-50 venture or a distribution deal, but I'm not doing no artist deal. Right. Do you think it's a smart idea, or as a side question, do you think it's a smart idea for artists sometimes to take a 360 or deal like those just to, so they can market themselves? That is because a very... Yeah, good question. because I, I see that a lot because a lot of uh, because I always thought about that like okay, 360s are rip off deals, we get that right, mm -hmm. but the art, but you got to think of the benefits if you mm -hmm. have a because you know what happens is like what happens is they'll take a 360, but they'll take a seven album deal and then the label don't even want to go past their second or third album because You're pretty smart, you yeah, read about this, yeah. I mean, I always study, I study music and stuff, I always I actually wanted to be a rapper at one point, okay. So, um, you know, so the one thing is this. You'd be like, if I take this 360 and I blow up off this 360 or whatever, I'll, ha I'll still have a brand even if I leave the label. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. And I could be independent right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So do you think that's a smart idea for some artists? You know what I'm saying? Or do you think that you should just strictly distribution deal, partnership deal, or whatever? 100%, it all depends on the type of person you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And let me explain myself. So for example, if you know... You, 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 you some shit at math. Mm -hmm. If you know you're not good at calculating, don't sign the 360 deal. Fact. If you know you're not good at comprehension, what the fuck a 360 deal is, don't sign a 360 deal. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know you, you understand numbers, for example, I could sign a 360 deal. I, pro I could sign a 360 deal today and I'll come out on top after four years. Right. Just because I understand math, I understand percentages, I understand contracts, I understand how this shit works, you know. Now, I'll say a solid eighty-five percent of people is not like that. Probably ninety-five percent. Yeah, probably yeah. ninety-five. Everybody that gets a three sixty deal, be like, man, it's a slave deal. It's no, it is. is because it is, really is. What will happen is you will sign a three sixty deal. They take a fifteen percent. They take it. Well, what fifteen percent? Fifteen. They take it like goddamn they take 85, seventy. Eighty five percent. Eighty five percent of your merch. Eighty five percent of your sales in in, in, in music. Eighty five percent of your endorsements. They own your masters. They own your eighty five percent of your publishing, and then they give you a goddamn let's just say five six million dollar advance. By the time you done ran through the money, you done got a little popularity, and then. You do an endorsement with goddamn Nike, and Nike throw you a stupid bag. And you like, damn, Nike threw me two million? And you're like, fuck, I got to get 85% of the label. You'd be like, yo, I could have done this shit myself. I could have blown up myself, hit time, up Nike. Yeah, but at the same time, the label did put that money behind you to get that Nike. Now, let me tell you what the label did in, 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 the, in the label's defense. They really didn't do anything for you. The, the thing is that the label served as a machine. Mm -hmm. 
Instead of you being seen five times, you were seen 15 to 20 times. Mm -hmm. And that's because the label may have relationships with people at Instagram, people at motherfucking Twitter, Snapchat, the marketing company down the street, whatever, and they can get all these placements. Mm -hmm. But you could do that yourself. It's going to require a lot of work. You're going to sweat. But it's, it's worth the couple dollars, extra dollars you're going to spend. Yeah. And you retain your intellectual property. Mm. That's the most important part. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that makes, a lot, that makes a lot of sense. So you said no deep. Don't, don't mess with them 360s, man. Yeah, I get it. Man. Only mess with them 360s, you know what you're doing. If you don't, man. Yeah, because I would get in 360s. Like, me personally, I think I would, if I had a choice. Yeah. Like, say if I ain't really had too much. Maybe I had a local buzz. Maybe doing 50000 Yeah. Some, somebody came to me with a 360 deal. Yeah. When I want my, I went out my deal early. Hundred percent. I need a clause. I need a clause. Yeah, I need a clause, clause where like yo, after this deal. amount of album I singles, deal. I need to buy. and I need to be able to continue to hold on to my like hold on to my platforms. Yeah, yeah. That YouTube is still the ownership of mine. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the end of the day, okay, y'all not pushing me no more. I'm independent now, but I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? For I'm sure. still here and I'm still pushing myself. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I don't need y'all. Right now, next question is, I'm going to start asking some more personal questions no about this, so just to get to know you. So I see that you're, you're a big dude, man. Yeah, you know for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, even then and now, did you ever have a struggle, you know, getting women, you know, and so forth, you know? 100%. Right. Oh, 100%. Uh, early on, it was just more like, uh, man. And no cap, I'll say this. I've been a small at one point in time. I've been big at one point Same in time. Head. I'm actually 50 pounds lighter now. Shout out to the hoes. <laughs> but I've been big and small at one point in time. But I'll just say this. like, As a bigger dude, you, you, your, your charisma has to be on, on max. Your confidence has to be on max. Your, mm -hmm. your swag got to be on max. Your everything got to be on max. Now, generally for a smaller dude... You don't really got to gotta have no game. You don't got to have too much game. game. You just got to meet the bare minimum of that female attraction level. Yeah, yeah. And spit the bare minimum game and you be sh you be straight. <laughs> you but saw how Quavo, he, he, you wanna, he put the snowflake. I, you feel me? The snowflake. Yeah, Glacier like, boy. That's all he did. He got Glacier boy. Glacier boy. Like, you feel me? <laughs> Any boys, they got it good. They got, hey, man. They got it good. But as, as a bigger dude, one thing I noticed is like, you're going to put a little bit more work in. Now, it's not. I ain't really tripping over it. It's actually advantageous to you at the end of the day because, like, you start picking up on female nature. You start mm -hmm. picking up on women, and that registers in your in your subconscious. Yeah, and then, like, let's just say you do lose weight, it co it becomes simple to you. Yeah, you could break a woman down in like five ten minutes. You could look at her, talk to her for like two three minutes, be like, I know what type of time she on, you know, and you know exactly, you know, man. You know exactly what to say to her, or exactly what to do, and you feel me? She yeah, yeah. So it's like it kind of like yeah, I get, I get exactly. It playing your favor, it playing your favor. Yeah, but right now you don't have that problem. Uh, I don't have that problem. <laughs> uh, like, I don't I have, have that. Problem. I strongly believe if I set my eyes on a female that I, I perceive to be a woman that I want to, I want to get, I'm gonna get you. Mm. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, it may be a year from now, but I will get you. So uh, I'm gonna get to the artists that you like. Uh, who, who's the artist that you you grew up? You know what I'm saying? Listen to. That's a good question. Uh, I grew up listening to uh, man, DMX, mm. uh, Hov, Wale. Wale probably like in my probably say like my top five for real. Mm. Shit. Oh, Wale is in your top. Yeah, 100%. a lot of people hold up. A lot of people get Wale out of flat. They be like, he don't do enough for the DMV. Man, fuck him. What you mean? Yeah. Man, fuck him up. You you crazy? You know what this man? Go listen to Wale last like three, four projects. You out your uh, fucking mind, yeah, like, yo? Yeah, a lot of people be like, man, nobody listen to Wale. Man, we just that we just that gangsters. Hey man, I'm saying they can listen to their gangster shit, but I'm just saying if you trying to like feed your soul, if you trying to like, and I understand what fuck it, I don't understand what they saying. No, I don't. Because like, he just don't make the type of music you like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He don't make the music you like, but the music he makes is good music. In my opinion, it's good music. I fuck mm -hmm. with it. I could tell you the whole album about nothing, track for track, word for word. You know, I could. I listen to Matter of Fact when sh when uh what music? Summer on Sunset. I was working a wild ass motherfucking uh, warehouse job that I used to work, and Summer on Sunset just dropped. 
like a week prior, and I was just bumping in the whole week, and I was like, damn, this nigga Wallace, yo. Mm -hmm. Fly nigga. Fly, man, definitely. But we, we ain't gonna see like he ain't had no bangers, though. He and, got and, bangers. And, and we ain't gonna feel like he ain't do nothing for the culture, man. He, he came out with the bait. The, you know what I'm saying? He came out with the, the, the hits for the for the function. He came yeah. out with the hits for the function, and then like moving forward after the hits for the function, Wale has always supported black women. Yeah, facts. Has always, always supported Wale that man. It's he like, has always supported black women. You pay attention in the aesthetic of his videos. He may not talk about it too much, but yeah. But if you pay attention to the aesthetic of his videos, he intentionally tries to let black women know I'm here for y'all. Mm. And I feel like he should be recognized more for that, for spice, sure. Spice, 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 spice. Whole time. What, what would you put in your category? Like, would you, uh, would you, uh, what would you put in your category? Would you put him with the uh, J. Cole's and the Kendrick Lamar's? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Cause I got a lot of flack for that. It was hundred percent. It was something that I, I was, I was joking about 100%. on my IG. Hundred you know percent. I'll put him in simply because I know a lot of people like confuse popularity and and talent. When it comes to talent. Wale is falling among the Coles and the Kendricks. Mm -hmm. He may not have the following and the, the cult following of the Coles and the Kendricks. When we talk about talent, mm -hmm. Wallace falls among them niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the joints that pull up to his functions be bad as shit. Yeah, that's fact. That's a, <laughs> now he got no. It's a it's a known fact. The prettiest woman is gonna be at the Wale concert. Yeah, you ain't gonna catch that in no, in no little DMV robber. You know what I'm saying? Catch a bunch of kids that's a and, fact. And, 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 and I'm talking about girls that got shit to lose. That you know they have careers. You gonna catch them at the Wale functions mm. for sure. Yeah, facts, man. Whole time, whole time. But on the side question, who you give uh, J Cole or Kendrick Lamar? Cold world. Cold world. Yeah. Yeah, cold world. I, I, I'm more into the Kendrick. I, I, I mean, it's not really my avenue, but if yeah. I had to choose, I choose Kendrick because he got a little swag with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, 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 I bang with Jane Cole. You know what I'm saying? For you know sure. Saying? I'm a cold world. He from the Carolinas. You know, our family. You know, DC people. Our family from the Carolinas. So yeah, I'm, for sure, I'm for sure. Cold. And I think it's like a more of an emotional thing for me with, <laughs> when, when it comes to cold, but mm -hmm. it's cold world. Yeah, facts, man. Definitely, man. Definitely, man. Uh, where's three things you always have with? Say that again? What's three things that you always have with you? Not near legal though. Not near legal. Faith, love, family. That's facts. Okay. <laughs> facts. I like that. Nothing material. Faith, love, love family. family. Okay. Yeah. Facts. All the time. Are you single or taken? I'm single. Single. Single man. <laughs> Ladies? <laughs> Hey. <laughs> all, my, all my chubby chasers? Hey, yeah. All my big boy lovers? Uh. Come on, man. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, all the time. Uh, um... What's your favorite designer, Brian? Damn. Right now, it's probably going to have to be Rockstar Original, mm -hmm. V Rich, mm -hmm. and definitely Savvy the Brand. Okay. Definitely Savvy the Brand. For sure. Okay. Nice. Nice. All the time. But I don't see that you, you ain't mentioned no Balenciagas, no. No. Uh, uh, I personally, Cartier's. simply because, like. You know what I'm I mean, I could buy it, but it's just like, I just don't like I don't wearing it, no. Nick. Shit Thursday. did a lot of I get it. Matter of fact, I like the Prada Cloud Busters, the first joints. I like the Triple S Balenci's, but it's just like, I'm probably going to wear white on white Air Forces and Tim's to the day I die. You know what I'm saying? And maybe every once in a while, I'll step in a pair of Balenci's, but... I just don't like wearing shit that other niggas is wearing. That's just like my my thing. I just my thing. I just don't feel like you need to spend uh, unnecessary uh, money. I man. Yeah, like you might. I got the money to buy those things, but I just don't see the purpose. The, in that. You understand what I I'm saying? I don't see the purpose in that. Like thirteen hundred dollar glasses and stuff, and I got rent bills and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. needs to go to the priorities first. Well, you, this is what I will say. This is what I will say. You touch a certain type of money. You touch a certain type of money. I no. Nah, I, I promise you, my G. Yeah. You touch a certain type of money. You gonna say it may not be Balenci's. Your type of shit may be like you like cameras or you like uh, flat screen TV. I mean that's things that I done seen think. some weird niggas. Yeah, that like you they be like yo, I like lithium battery. 
batteries. I like collecting lithium batteries. And just spend, they blow checks on lithium batteries. And you be like, yo, oh, what the fuck is you doing spending 100000 on batteries? But this is just the shit that nigga like. I mean, but those are the things that you use. You say cameras, right? I'm one of my bloggers, so definitely. There you go. I'm going to get the red camera. You're going to get the red camera. I'm going to get the, with the, the raven. Yeah. I'm you want to get that. You're going to so get So going to benefit my business. It's going to benefit that's a your benefit. business. But some glasses that's going to break just like some $50 ones. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know what I'm saying? I will say, for example, a control board. Mm -hmm. Most people who uh, got studios, the control board mo most of the time is digital now. It ain't really, it ain't really like important in the studio. Mm -hmm. But for the simple fact that it look good aesthetically, right? You get it, cause you could run up a check higher, right? I understand it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. That's just like you know the the, the issue with the Balenciaga. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Uh, who you think is the hottest driver out right now? In the DMV? Uh, two questions. It was DMV and not DMV. That's a good question. Hottest rapper out in the DMV right now? Or do you even pay too much attention to the DMV rap scene? I do. If it ain't Flock, it's me. Uh, oh, you rock with Flock? Oh, no, I fuck with Flock. Yeah, I fuck with Flock, too. No, 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 I fuck with Flock. And matter of fact, I will say this. I think what resonates best with Flock is like, I listen to Flock's music a lot. And I think what, what his sound is when Flock is talking about, you know, that painful, uh, that painful upbringing and aggression. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the Flock that I feel like people fuck with the most. Caesar Salad Flock, you know. That's the Flock that I, you know, that I fuck with the most. Mm -hmm. Where you, you can listen to Flock on Caesar Salad, you're like, yo, I understand. Even if you're not from where he's from, you can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it. That's when you know, like, that emotional connection is there, and you're not even from where he's from. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I guess that's what you're saying. 100%. Well, as far as general. In, now, in general, overall, of all time, ho, right now. I'm talking about hottest right now. I'm not hottest right, right now? Right now. Hey, if it's not Fabi, it's me. Mm. If it's not Fabi, it's me. I listen to Fabi every day. I'm probably Fabi. Uh, I, would, I would probably give it to uh, Lil Baby right now. Lil Baby? Lil Baby. Nah, I you know Lil what? Baby. Lil Baby can rap his ass off, Lil but I'm just, my preference. Yeah, my my personal preference is like my sister go to school in New York. She introduced me to Favi when I started listening to yeah, Favi. Yeah, Favi's hot. I was like, yo, this nigga, they got a whole wave. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just my personal preference. Yeah, I yeah. listen to Lil Baby. My personal preference is like think, Favi yeah. and me. I think on an independent rap scene, I think Money Man is probably on it, like on the street. Nah, definitely, Money definitely. Man is like he's, he's that nigga. Yeah, like he's I, that nigga. My cousin introduced me to Money Man. I was just like, yo. He's like everybody be like we sound like Future, but he's saying something. But he's stuff. saying something. Yeah, you know I'm saying. And it's like yo, my nigga got the motherfucking stars in the ceiling. It's like he he independent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? He ain't something. No, he ain't take no money from nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't he, knock that. He man. got the he went the cash money and gave that money back the and same. You, yeah. you understand what I'm yeah. saying? It's, it's, it hardly ever happens like that. Yeah, and now I got to smash now with, with, with Lil Baby, ironically. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I think on the independent scene. Because I look at everything. As far as DMV, I think No Savage is the hottest right now. Oh, for I sure. With no, for sure. I rock with No sure. Savage. And um, I, I say No Savage. I rock. Personality wise, Aunt Liz is the hottest right now. <laughs> Personality wise, yeah, yeah, right? Because everybody. I seen, I seen, I seen Ant. TV, he's the hottest rapper as far I as seen Ant. I seen yeah. Ant. But what I will say is that, what I will say is that, like, because they're not, I don't really personally know too many, like, too many female rappers in the DMV. Yeah. But. Shelly is something to really, really like. Yeah, she's she's got she got she got to get back on that. Nah, look, consistent. You know, the funny yeah. thing is, the funny thing is, if I had ten bands right now and Shelly was just like, I'm charging ten bands, I'm throwing Shelly the ten bands. Cause you think she's the best one for the future. Nigga, what? Yeah. I, look, trust me. Yeah. I know how to curate talent. I know how to. I know where the game is going to be in the, in the next five to ten years. Yeah, when I see artists and I I, I could look at the artists and be like, you're going to be some dookie and you're going to be some you're going to be. You're gonna be some hot shit in the next five to ten years. Mm -hmm. Shelly is a real deal, Holyfield. Right. That's a fact. Yeah, fact. You know what I'm saying? I, I already see it. Yeah, and female raps. So 100%. Yeah, facts. Right. She rap better than some niggas mm -hmm. on some niggas shit. No, that's facts. Yeah. I, I, yeah, she definitely got a talent, though, man. Mm hmm. All the time, man. Um, what's your best go, go to restaurant at DMV? Ah! It's a. Uh, 
It's not even a re it is a restaurant, but where I'm from, we call it Achumbu House. What? Yeah. Achumbu House. Okay. You gotta say it, bro. You gotta Achumbu say it. House. Achumbu House. Achumbu House. It's not a registered business. It's just an auntie that just cook African food in her house. I love African food. You feel me? You just pull up to the crib, and all the African niggas be there, and she's making fufu and arrow. She's making some. She's making some authentic Cameroonian dishes, and you make fish with the with the eyeballs so on that. Ah, the that's you know, my type yeah, of fish you go, right my in. nigga. That's my type of fish. You right pull in. me the eyeballs still in there. You yeah, feel yeah. me? And you just sitting there with your niggas. You talking man shit while you eating an African dish with a pretty young thing right next to you, and she's eating some suya, and you drinking, you sipping on something real strong. Yeah. You know, that's why, that's, 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 that's my preference. Yeah, yeah, facts. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, facts. Yes, sir. I, I definitely can respect that right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, whole time, what is one superpower that you wish you had? The gift of clarity. Mm. The gift of clarity. I feel like knowing what you want to do. Because, you know, a lot of times, and I'm pretty sure you, this happened to you plenty of times where it's just like, you're not really too sure about how you want to proceed on something. But you know you're trying to do something great, but you don't know if like what you want to do is really like it. That's because at that moment you lack clarity. Mm -hmm. If you if you had 100% clarity all the time, you know what you want to do, at what time you want to do it, the, the time left is going to take you, but when you lack clarity, you really don't know how you want to go about things. Mm -hmm. When you got clarity, you can execute your your you know your dreams very very like in a timely yeah. fashion. Yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? I'll say gift of clarity for sure. Mm -hmm. Facts, facts, facts. Uh, I think you already answered that question, but who's your favorite rapper of all times? My favorite rapper of all time would probably had to be The Notorious, for sure. Yeah, you gotta give me that. You give me that demeanor, for man. For sure, for sure. Yeah. If not, it's gonna be ho. It's, it's gonna, gonna be definitely, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, facts, man. I was, I was really big on New York. I was a Dipset fan growing up. So oh yeah. I was big on Cameron. My guy. I was big on Cameron. Before they was beefing with Hov or after? A little bit before, but I was still supporting him even after. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was just a big, I was a big Cameron fan. You know what I'm saying? Just the confidence, like he. It ain't even matter if he wasn't on Hov level or Nas level or whoever. Yeah, 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 he's still gonna go at you, and he gonna go at you with his with his riddle rhymes. With, with his riddle rhymes, but, but, but hard. But when I but when I listen to him, his riddle rhymes would say like five bars in two words. Yeah. But people wouldn't notice. You know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. When I got older, it used to just sound cool to me as a kid. Uh -huh. But when I got older, I realized, oh, is he really spitting? Spitting, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody. You know what I'm saying? But he just simplified the words. He just dumbed it down. His sound yeah. was the same. Like, I'd be like, she's man. But like, Cam was a genius. He was a genius. But now, I, I, genius. I definitely had love for Jay, especially like Reasonable Doubt Jay. Oh, man. Uh, that's the best Jay for me. The Hard Knock Life Jay. All of that. Of course. Like, that, sure. that was my generation right there. You know what I'm saying? I was rocking with, I was rocking with Jay Grill Heavy. You know what I'm saying? But I was into that. Like, the, it was either the Locks, Dipset, G Unit, all that. That whole era right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. That's yeah. something I love right there. You know for sure. Saying? For sure. Yeah. Um, what would you say was the favorite song that you made? It's off my album 1017. My favorite song is You Know. My favorite song on my album 1017. You can stream it on like all streaming platforms. Right. Just type in Tazi. Uh, my favorite song, You Know, off of 1017. That's my shit. Mm -hmm. Follow after You Know, probably like dripping. You know, that's my, like my favorite joints. That, you know, I know at any point in time, if Savvy in a club, Olive in a club, Cody in a club, Spice in the club, Judy in the club, my sister, whoever, they play them joints word for word. They know what the fuck to say. Word for uh, word. What, what, what would you prefer? You prefer day clubs or night clubs? Damn, that's a good question. I ain't gonna lie, man. The most beautiful one be at them brunch parties. They be at them brunches, yo. Cause you, especially like them brunch parties where like they got the clear windows mm -hmm. and the sunlight hit their face the right way. You understand? Like, Cody got a clean face, you feel me? Like, she don't got no bumps on her face or whatever. So when the sun hit her face, she got that glow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She like a mamacita. When, when the sun hit her face, you yeah. feel me? Real clean, glowing joint. So I say the brunch joints, yeah, yo. The brunch, yeah, yeah. The that's, brunch. That's where the models come out at. You know what I'm saying? The best I conversation. My brunch, I went to my first brunch party, 
And I uh, I went in my work uniform. You know what I'm saying? But it looked so but it looked so it looked so you understand? I didn't have a you know, I ain't had a regular uniform. I had the little giant. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a different vibe from you know, you used to go to nightclubs, people bumping you and stuff. You feel me? And they brought these man, just a, a different vibe. She's not even that drunk yet. Yeah, she off the some uh, what was the drinks called? The drinks the mimosas. The mimosas. Just nice and bubbly. You know what I'm saying? By Champagne. nighttime, she's sloppy. Yeah. She's yeah. all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> come to brunch. Come to brunch. <laughs> Come to brunch. Come to brunch. Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> uh, will be one place you want to move. You know what I'm saying? Out like if you was to leave the country or even your region. I know you said you don't. You know you always want to have a place in the DMV. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But what's one place you would like to move if not? Cameroon. 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 Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? What's a what's a good place to go to in Cameroon? Uh, Limbe. Mm. Douala. Um, those are my favorite places to be. Limbe and Douala. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people like living in Yaoundé, but I, I pretty much like, during my time when I was living in Cameroon, I, I bounced between Boya, Limbe, and Douala, and that was where like I spent most of my time. And it's like, so Limbe is like by the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, by the water. Douala is the same thing, but Douala is like New York. Mm. That's where like all the hustling ass niggas be. Okay. If you're trying to be on some get money shit. Oh, so they got some gangsters out there too. Nigga, what? Okay. The first time I ever got robbed was in. <laughs> it was in. It was in Cameroon. Oh. And man. The, the type of robbery you gonna meet niggas that they don't care whether they live or die today. You mm. feel me? All they care about is fucking paper. And when I say paper, I'm talking about. 25 cents to get a meal. Yeah, if they can't get that 25 cents. So they basically, they gangsters to survive. They, they to survive, yeah, yeah, yeah. yo. They to survive. These are the type of niggas you just don't want to fuck with. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they got guns or anything, but trust me, you push, them, they, they, you push them to that limit, they will do some very, very weird, fucked up shit to you. Mm -hmm. There's certain type of niggas in camera where, like, when you meet them, just give them some money. Just give them some money and just be on your way. You don't want them problems. Really? You could just walk on the street and a nigga could just walk up to you and just have his hand. But how much is the U.S. currency compared to Cameroon? Like, if I have a hundred Right now, one dollar is equivalent to probably like 600 or something. Really? You feel me? And 600 or something could buy you like, I'll say like, that's that's a good. So one dollar? So that means if I take a thousand dollars to Cameroon, I'm yeah. basically like. So like with a thousand dollars in Cameroon, I'm in a five-star hotel. I got a driver. I got. Um, I could buy bottles for like at least three, four days in the club, depending on what club it is. I'm paying at least um, ten, twenty dollars a day for a driver and the car. The car might be a probably like a Land Rover if it's like a Range Rover, maybe like thirty, forty dollars a day. You know what I'm saying? One last thing. You know what I'm saying? If you was to come up and win the lotto, say mm -hmm. $100 million, what's the first thing you're going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hire a very good financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm probably going to put uh, $100 million, I'm probably going to put like a good $85 million away. $85 yeah. That's smart. I'm going to put $85 million away. And for me to access the $85 million is going to be contingent upon me and be, uh, for me, being able to make my business to make at least a million dollars a year. Mm. Um, Just sit me, on a million dollars. For me to access that 85 million. Mm -hmm. um, if I can make, if I can let my business make me a million dollars a year, then I'll say, okay, now after my business can make a million dollars a year, I can access that 85 million. Until my business can do that, then I can't do that. Yeah, and I can't touch that 85 million. But I, I, I can touch the other 15, mm -hmm. you know. On top of that, I'll just say, you know, um, Good financial planning, good budgeting, and just the, like don't blow your and that fifteen that you got off of that um hundred million. It's like if you blow it, you blow it, and that's just it. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. And I feel like that's really really. I think important. that's a yeah. That's a lot of uh, a lot of artists don't think like that. They get that they get that eighty five million. I, I, I'm guaranteed they spend they spending they spending eighty five million within that year. No, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. You hear, you hear a lot about. You no, know, it's just natural. Of, yeah, it's, it's just like, natural. If I get, eight, if I walk on the street and I pick up a hundred million on the floor, yo, most niggas they're going, they're going to get a Rolls Royce Wraith with the stars and the ceiling, wrong with that? including Savvy the brand. Yeah, 
Yeah. He's getting a Rolls Royce. He's picking the baddest bitches up in the DMV. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And they uh -huh. going to, they, 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 he ain't got to pick them up. They're going to run to the car. They're going to run to the car. Where he, he, he's going to pull up to? Where you going to pull up to, Savvy? Society Lounge. Hey, he gonna, oh, he gonna, he gonna buy, nah, this going to buy Society Lounge. He going to buy Society, society Lounge. lounge. <laughs> I'm going to bring back Doug Oak. Oh, mm. Now that Silver Spring. Ah! Yes. He gonna buy Society Lounge. He gonna buy Silver Spring. He gonna buy CFE back. He gonna buy, gonna buy the Pearl back. back. He gonna oh, buy all that. All of. I'm with you on that one. All I'm of. With that. I'm with that. <laughs> I'm with that right there. You know what I'm saying? I think. I think yeah. probably one thing I do is uh, I'm probably spending that 85 million. I'm wasting it, but I'm wasting it for the right reasons. Wait, what you gonna waste it on? Uh, a program to help, you know, fight gentrification in DC. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Well, I did. You gotta fight gentrification on DC. I mean, basically, just you know, education programs to help people, you know, that's getting displaced. Because it's not only I come from uptown, so you know, uptown has its hoods and its projects and stuff, but it's mostly middle class. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that was middle class are getting displaced without mm -hmm. knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what's going on? So I think, you know. Uh, I think for the most part, I would I would probably put a lot of investments. That honestly, uh, try to buy as much prop like lower like lower price property back. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And you know it's not going to be a profit. It's going to be more of a non profit. But you know I'm still mm -hmm. want my money back. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. We'll be more in the non profit type of range. What are your views on gentrification? Huh? What are your views on gentrification? With my views on gentrification, well, I come from a block that that was fully gentrified. Okay. I grew up on a street that was completely gentrified. It came from it came from in the nineties of all black. Mm -hmm. It was a mixed community. You had working class, you had hustlers. Yeah, 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 you yeah, had a little yeah, bit of everything yeah, yeah. on that block. But it but it was a black community. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You went from a black community to like ain't nobody on my block except for two for people. Sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So you support gentrification? I could support community upgrade. I don't support gentrification. I think like, I think those are two different things. I like your I like yeah, your answer. Like, yeah. Where you go to school at? <laughs> DCPS, man. Cardo was in high. Okay. You know, I think I learned more when I got out of high school. No, definitely. When I was in high school. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. But no, yeah, man. But now, um, what's the last? What's the next projects and everything like that? All right, I got a project. Uh, shit, my my birthday actually next week. Uh, I'm dropping a project ten seventeen. Mm -hmm. Um, called uh, heavy is the heavy is the head. Um, it's a little EP I'm doing. Um, I don't know how to say a little EP. It's a big EP I'm doing. I'm the type of nigga I like to be flamboyant the way I do shit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of bottles, a lot of fly women, a lot of boss niggas around. You know, a lot of fly shit going around, so it's gonna be a lot of a lot of shit going down or whatever. But you know, um, the project I'm doing, I'm really, I've been working on it for a while, and uh, it's it's probably I'll say probably my best work. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, October 17th, you have to check out for for the EP. You know, uh, any next singles, any uh, videos on the way or out right now? Man, I said I said I actually said Flock a track. Um, oh, you got something with Flock on the way? Well. I won't say I got something with Flock on the way. I'm trying to get something with Flock mm -hmm. on the way. You know what I'm saying? I sent him a track. Hopefully he fuck with it. Hopefully he can fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with him as an artist and I listen to the type of music you make and I was like, all right. I shot it right up his alley like, yo. Let's do it. This, this, mm -hmm. I, this the alley who for you. Yeah. This, all you gotta do is dunk it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm waiting on. That's why I'm waiting what, uh, on. What, what videographers did you rocking with? I, I, I can see more in the valley feel. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Out here. Well, I can see. I mean, whatever you like. I mean, who you like. Who you know, it all it all depend on, it all really depend on the vibe. But when I go to videographers, usually, like, Savvy be tapped in with most of the, like, videographers yeah. and the type of vibe I be I be shooting for. So I hit up I hit up Savvy, I hit up Jew, and Jew be like, yo, I, I listen to the song, this is the type of vibe it, it's giving. So, yo, you should fuck with Valley, or you should fuck with goddamn uh, fucking uh, Hunter M. There you go. Yeah, I rock with Hunter M. You feel yeah. me? You know what I'm I saying? See, I can definitely see that, man. I can definitely see that, man. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I like the vibe, man. I like that mature vibe. You know what I'm saying? I like that, man. The balls vibe. For sure. Man. man, I try my best. Yeah, I like that, man. I like that, man. I definitely want to see a lot more from you, man. Man, definitely trust will. me. No, definitely you will. You will. You definitely mm -hmm. will see a lot from me. DMV going to see a lot from me. Man, we open seven days a week. If anybody trying to book studio time to record, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We got really, really solid engineers over here. Um... We got a promo we're running right now. Four hours for 150. You see it right here? Right the, here. Yeah, Vibe Records. Vibe Records, man. They got a special, four hour special, man. Four hours special. How much for all nighters? Because I know a lot of rappers want to do all nighters. Right? A lot of rappers want to do all nighters? Yeah. They don't want to do no all nighters. They, they be faking like they want to do all nighters. Ah, they be faking. They be, they be faking. Be, we'll take the money, though. 
Yeah, yeah. We'll take the money. Yeah. If we don't show up, we still take the money. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? But they don't want to do no all night. They know they want to do no all night. But if y'all want to get a session, man, they got good prices too. And professional equipment. You know what I'm saying? Too. Professional equipment, we got a U87, we doing big shit, you know what I'm saying? But if you do want to get an all-nighter, we do got all-nighters. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I'll give you all the all-nighter price, but I'm going to spec all-nighter quality content. Yeah, if you make true. bullshit, I'm going to tell you it's bullshit and you won't get the fuck out. Nah, don't do them like that, man. <laughs> they, pay, they pay for their money, man. Don't do them like that. Don't do them like that. They pay, they, they pay their money. They man. sure did. They sure they did. did. Yo, as long as you get your bag, They man, sure did. Know. But I will. if you ask me my opinion, I'll be like, it's some doo-doo. It's some doo-doo. <laughs> I'll let you know. Nah, man. For real, man. Definitely. Where they can follow you at, man? They can follow me at, at Call Me Tazi. That's at C-A-L-L-M-E-T-A-Z-I. And if you want to follow my business page, it's at Vibe Records, mm -hmm. V-E-Y-E-B-R-E-C-O-R-D-S. Yeah, facts. And every week, you can catch me on The Streets Is Talking. Y'all already know how to spell The Streets Is Talking. Right? Yeah. It's the podcast, right? Yeah. It's the spiciest podcast in the DMV. I'm going to be a host. I'm going to be a part of I mean, like, I'm going to hey. be a special guest. Like, Yo, I'm going to I mean, you coming on the next episode already. Oh, yeah, we logged in. Man. You know what I'm saying? The visual's going to be popping already. Oh, yeah. You feel me? So, next episode, Streets is Talking, Forever Coley. Y'all already know how to spell that. Forever, C-O-L-E-Y. Myself, call me Tazi. We got the Don Dada himself. Man, I ain't nobody. The Don Dada himself. Nobody. DMV, the, the CEO of DMV Hoods and News. Yeah, yeah. And myself, we're just going to be in here talking our shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's exactly. what it is. We just talk. We just talk about spicy shit in the DMV, spicy shit around the world, yeah, important yeah. shit around the world. We just speak our shit. That's just what it is. Yeah. And I'm definitely gonna come down and support. You know, I do a podcast too, so I'm, but I'm gonna come down there and show support. Podcast for sure, for sure, for sure. So I'm definitely gonna be definitely. We gonna need your logo. We're gonna have to throw it up on the wall, oh, man. Yeah, sure, man. Definitely, definitely we're gonna have to throw it up on the wall. That. Appreciate for sure, for sure. Definitely, man. So we're gonna wrap this up, man. My G. I definitely appreciate this. It's your boy DMV Hoods and News, and we are gone. Sweet.